and I was looking at the documents case versus this one. I have to say from a messaging standpoint, if you want to win this in the court of public opinion before the 2024 election, the Justice Department in this case is falling short. Interesting. All right, uh, Jonathan Turley, let me pursue that with you then. Uh, because, you know, this, you know, some people have said, and some lawyers have said, maybe ch chatting to you, this is the weakest T of the cases as far as prosecutors are concerned and going after Donald Trump, that you're trying to attach him for cause and effect and a quid pro quo to inciting words, to inciting violence, to, well, what we saw on January 6th. I had a, even a Democratic congressman on the other day, uh, Jonathan, who was trying to argue about the 14th Amendment and that that alone, uh, you know, which shows you can't hold office if they've engaged in an insurrection or rebellion. Uh, they're going and betting over backwards to say he caused an insurrection or a rebellion. And the reason why that's important to a lot of Democrats is that that would disqualify him from being president of the United States. That's the leap they're taking. What do you think of that train of thought and right. that leap? Because that's not the connection that's going on here in this case. No, and it's really approaching the urban legend uh, status uh, because he's not charged with, with incitement. He's not charged with insurrection. He's not charged with seditious conspiracy. He's not charged with all of those things the Democrats impeached him on the second time. Uh, so they're really big footing the Constitution here. It's not there. Uh, but the question is, what is here? And I have to tell you, this is pretty thin soup in my view. Uh, they have a colossal constitutional problem that they will have to overcome from the outset. They have to establish all of these linchpins that he not only believed that uh, the, the truth of the matter, that he understood he was lying, but then he played a criminal role in getting these other individuals to take the steps mentioned uh, in the indictment. Uh, that is a very difficult uh, case to prove. And I think part of the dynamic that we're seeing is that you can't just, you know, pursue a president from pillar of the post across the country without people beginning to tune out. I mean, look, this day would be called a life-changing experience for most people. For Donald Trump, it's called Thursday. I mean, he is, you know, he, this is his third indictment. He's going to likely get a fourth indictment. And the real jury in this case is likely the one that will be voting for 2024. And I think we're already seeing how this is impacting them. But I, I have to tell you, I, in this case, I should think that Trump would welcome aspects of this case precisely because of that issue and also because he has these threshold legal questions that he should be able to get to the appellate courts fairly quickly. So Smith has to be careful what he's asking for. The Trump team might give it to him. You know, it's unlikely mm. he'll get a trial put in front of the Florida trial, but they could very well help him out in moving these, these issues to the appellate court and asking them, is this the criminalization of disinformation? Are you about to criminalize false political speech? Because in the past, the Supreme Court has been extremely skeptical of laws that attempt to do that. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.